Hi, Gore Street Cafe. Hi, Sue St. Marie. Hi. Hi, YouTube. Um, my name is Byron. Um, I was going to come up and try and do a workshop for y'all this month, but didn't work. So I'm making a video about zines. Um, and this is my friend Erin. She's here to help. She also writes zines. Um, her, you write usually under the name of Ewar. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ewar has been publishing zines forever. Um, forever. Forever. Also does graphic design and editing work for a magazine called The Peak. And this is Byron. <laughs> Byron uh, is a musician. Yes. You've been writing songs since I've known you. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you're also um, a sound experimenter. Yes. Experimenting with sounds. How long have you been making zines for? Since 2001. A uh, friend of mine... That wasn't slowed down, that was actually just his <laughs> brain processing time. Uh, 2001, <laughs> my friend Joe uh, showed me some zines that she had that like second wave riot girl women from Toronto were producing and I was very excited about it and I was mm -hmm. amazed that people could just publish their own ideas and it took me a while to make my own thing but I started making these posters Sound, sound. And um, I would publish them by posting them up with wheat paste. Was this the first one? This was this was the first That's one. That's number I one. Wheat paste is two parts water, one part any kind of flour. And you cook it up a bit, makes a nice glue. And then from those, I started making book zines. Why do you call them book zines? Is it because they have like a cardstock color cover? Well, they have it there. They just are folded. Oh, stapled okay. usually yeah. down the middle. A traditional zine type. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Traditional layout design of a pamphlet or a zine. From these I started Well oh, this is cut and paste type this, thing. Yeah. From there I started uh, experimenting with smaller sizes or larger sizes. And eventually I also made audio zine. Recording different things on different trips or different things I was doing to different places. This is all based on trips out east going out east um, to Halifax and New Brunswick and so it sounds of random things snippets from the radio and my friends and I were on the radio poems sounds of the city songs uh, walking through hallways even like the doorbell at the house that I was living oh, in. oh I remember that yeah you know. that's good what's the question how did it all start yeah how did it start? oh yeah um, way back in grade 11 in 1998 um, the kids the grade above me um, were making uh, they made um, like a one sheet kind of paste up thing for a media project or something. I, I just thought it was like the coolest thing. I thought they were the coolest kids. And so when they graduated out, they stopped making it. It was called Quarty. Um, and I, I started making one. It was called The Voice. And it was just like the same type of stuff, like poetry by my friends and drawings that they'd made or have I made and like rants and stuff. Like, you know, your parents have pissed you off. And so you've, you've written, you just write a story about that mm -hmm. thing. Beloved biology teacher. Um, we got her to give us some interesting biology facts. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty fun. It was a lot of fun. And I, that's what I did in high school. And then when I moved to Southern Ontario, I wanted to do something a little more, with had a little more meaning. meaning. And so that's when I got into like the traditional, like what you're talking about, like a zine kind of format where it's like folded sheets of paper with a staple in it. <laughs> um, and I don't, I can't, here it is. Free the leeches. Um, and yeah, so, and it's just like, pictures I found on the internet with like some prose that I wrote and this quickly grew into what I do now these days is called fag punk it's in its 13th episode and it's a uh, queer erotica mostly dude on dude so it's stuff that I've written and it's also like stuff that other people have written to be published in here people are really stoked about um, this scene uh, I also still do a lot of other stuff I do a lot of one-offs this one's a coloring book scene that I made um, it's drawings of stuff that I saw or used while I was traveling in out to Saskatchewan, which is kind of fun. Here's a wind-up radio. I was also at the time reading uh, George R. R. Martin's um, A Feast for Crows. Where do your ideas come from? Mine? Thin air. 
I just produce them. It's amazing. Uh, no, but <laughs> of course that's where they come from. But like, no, I get inspired a lot from the people around me and the artists that I come to meet, um, the things that I see. How do you, where do you get your ideas? Usually conversations with people and conflict, like <laughs> things that I'm struggling with. That's what I mean by conflict. Like, like questions? Questions that I have mm -hmm. that I'm working through and I need a, a forum to ask the questions that I have because my friends get bored of talking to me when I keep pestering them. <laughs> about things. Um, when you have your images and your text and all that, you can start working on layout. Mm -hmm. um, that might be considering the size of paper that you're yeah. using. This is a... 11 by 17 or a tabloid size sheet of paper. And then are you going to use with something like this? So this is a 8 and a half by 11, folded in half, which is a letter. And then you can take that size and fold it in half again. And this, this is a quarter size so from eight and a half 4. by eleven. Four point two five. Four point two five five point five five point five. Yeah. Inches. We're talking inches. Very fun. Layouts, layouts, half the fun. I find. Yeah. And like, there's lots of different kinds of layout. Layout doesn't necessarily have to be something where it's like, um, like all done on a computer. Yeah, that's an example. Yeah, where this it's is like all done on all a very computer. clean and cold and kind of. I mean, if you have a lot of text, you need to fit it all in, and you actually know how to use the programs to do this then that's great, but that doesn't, like, don't let that be, like, a barrier to you creating a zine, because if you don't know how to do that, you can also make really beautiful things like your friend does, mm -hmm. where this is all just beautiful cut and paste words and images that they found that they just uh, love, love so much. And a lot of work with the photocopier. Yeah, that's, Playing yeah, with the photocopier. Play with your photocopier. When you have your zines, how do you start getting them to people? Well, there's a few ways, Byron. Yes. <laughs> um, I like myself, I like to read um, zine review zines. Good old Broken Pencil. This is the newest issue of Broken Pencil. And it has a lot of articles in it um, about zines, about independent culture, that kind of stuff. But then in the back it has uh, reviews of books and movies and zines. You can also go to zine fairs. Yeah. They're just big events where you call people together who make zines or different crafts or different fun things. You can all set up your tables, make them look good, and you can sell your zines or trade zines or just talk about zines, get people mm -hmm. to talk about them, do workshops. Mm -hmm. I've met a lot of friends that way, mm -hmm. sold some of my zines. It's very rewarding to be able to pay for all your costs yeah. of, of producing your work and, and have people want be interested in what you're producing. And at these zine fairs you'll also find uh, distros. Distro is short for distribution. Yes. People that will be distributing um, kind of collections of their own stuff that they really like. And that leads us into, oh yes, my distro. Um, <laughs> Look Mom Distro is something I started years and years ago and the reason why I started it was because I didn't have a place to do to what to do with all the zines that I made and so I started destroying at like zine fairs and like kind of any kind of craft fair that I could get a table at. Yeah, I'm online. You can find it at Blogspot. You can find the links below. Don't worry. We won't leave you hanging. Zine club. Zine club. Zine club. Zine club. Zine club, zine club started in Hamilton and it was started by uh, an awesome woman, Erin Stanley. Oh, uh, that's not really. That's Erin Stanley when she was, I don't know how old. This is Erin Stanley. My little, little baby. Um, but I don't know, maybe four or five years ago, Erin started Zine Club because she decided she wanted to make more zines. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to challenge herself and make a zine a month for a whole year. And some friends caught wind of this and also too wanted to take part in this challenge. And then uh, it just became zine f our friends making zines for each other. And then it kind of came into Zine Club. Mm -hmm. Where they'd gather once a month show up with a stack of photocopied zines that they'd made. Someone would introduce them. Yeah, one at a time, people one would at a hand time, out their stuff. Introduce each other like we did at the beginning of the video, I would introduce Erin, and then Erin could present her zines. Everybody would be very encouraging, very mm -hmm. supportive, cheering each other on, asking questions about the zines. How'd you do this? Why'd you write about this? You'd leave with a big stack of everybody's zines for the month. It was just a great way to encourage people to practice uh, writing scenes together and for each other and getting them out there. And we, we, we ended up starting a zine club in Guelph yeah. after they'd already begun theirs in Hamilton. Hamilton came to Guelph, did a zine reading with all their zines. We really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And so we started one here and then there was one started in Winnipeg. Yeah, I think so. Um, and so hopefully there'll be one started in Sault Ste. Marie. Yeah. So you want to make your own zine? It's easy to start out. What I made here, I think this is a zine club zine, yeah. Uh, it's called Radio Punk. 
and it's uh, seven days a week uh, where you can find radio punk shows. Nice little zine. It was really easy to make for me. Um, but it's a uh, one sheet of paper. Mm. Mm. So it's like a couple folds, and there you go. I made one too for a, a writing class that I was facilitating, and it's a bunch of short poems. And as you read through, this is the static poem side, so it's all about technology in the city. But then you can actually turn it inside out. And when you turn it inside out, it becomes another book of poetry about nature, and the environment, mm -hmm. and the wilderness um, called Wood Poems. So you, there's fan fancy things that you can do with these. Um, Aaron has drawn up a beautiful zine that I've scanned and I've sent to uh, Nicole and Sam, and hopefully they'll be handing out copies to y'all of the printed uh, version of the zine that Aaron made on yeah, how to like make Yeah, it's like how to make one of these little guys. And so that y'all can start with that if you want, or you can just go big and make those booklets that we've been making and yeah. showing you. So we just hope that our zines can inspire y'all at the Fishbowl Festival to make your own zines, maybe start a zine club, and just start sharing your ideas, trading them, selling them, mailing them. In fact, down below you can see our post office box. Mm -hmm. or Send right, us your zines. Yeah, or, or right here. And we would love to read them. Send us letters, send us hate mail. It's okay. Oh, we'll write back. We'll write back. No, and seriously, we'll write back. We'd love to trade zines with y'all. Mm -hmm. It'd be a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed the video. And, and it's okay if you don't know how to make a zine. We don't know how to make videos. No clue. No clue. Yeah. So, goodbye. See you later. I want you to get together. Put your hands together one time. I want you to get together. I want you to get together.